Hi, my name is Yulan Li, and today I want to talk about types of neurotransmitters, and hope you enjoy my lecture. Have you ever wondered how our limbs move or how we can experience sensations? Well, all the signals involved in our daily functions are based on neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that carry chemical signals from one neuron or nerve cell to the target cell which can be another nerve cell, a muscle cell, or a gland. Some neurotransmitters have an excitatory function, meaning they stimulate the next cell to fire and activate receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, thereby enhancing the effect of the action potential. On the other hand, there are neurotransmitters that have an inhibitory role, which means they prevent the next cell from firing and inhibit the occurrence of action potential. In this article, we'll introduce several common neurotransmitters, including acetylcholine, dopamine, and serotonin, which play vital roles in our daily lives. The first neurotransmitter to introduce is acetylcholine, which is an excitatory uh, neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine plays a role in muscle action, learning, and memory. One of the primary functions of acetylcholine is triggering muscle contraction. When acetylcholine binds to the receptor sites on the membranes of muscle, muscle fibers, it opens the ligand-gated sodium channels, allowing sodium ions to enter the muscle cell and stimulate muscle contraction. In addition to its role in the muscle action, acetylcholine also plays a crucial role in learning and memory, which are essential for our daily lives. One well-known condition related to acetylcholine deficiency is Alzheimer's disease, which commonly affects older individuals. Alzheimer's disease is characterized by difficulties in forming and recalling memories, delusions, and frequent confusion. On the other hand, excessive levels of acetylcholine can lead to a cho cholinergic crisis, causing symptoms such as headache, insomnia, and confusion. In more severe cases, it can result in central nervous system depression, characterized by convuls convulsions, coma, and respiratory re depression. High levels of acetylcholine can have detrimental effects on the heart, respiration, and, and brain, potentially leading to fatal outcomes. The next neurotransmitter I want to discuss is dopamine, which plays a key role in our body movements, learning and attention, and emotions. When there's a deficiency of dopamine in the brain, it can lead to uncoordinated and unbalanced body movements, which are typical symptoms of Parkinson's disease and tremors. These symptoms arise due to low levels of dopamine in the brain region responsible for regulating movement. Conversely, excessive levels of dopamine have been linked to increased aggression and impulsivity. Condi conditions such as schizophrenia, depression, and psychosis are associated with elevated dopamine levels. In schizophrenia, common behaviors include delusions, positive hallucinations, and a, degree and a decrease in emotional range and cognitive func functions, which are negative symptoms. Imbalances in neurotransmitter levels can disrupt normal bodily functions, whether there is an excess or deficiency. Finally, I would like to introduce serotonin, which plays a role in our mood, sleep, and arousal. It regulates our mood and is often referred to as our natural feel-good chemical. When serotonin levels are low, it can lead to depression. Consequently, medications for anxiety, depression, and other mood disorders often aim to increase serotonin levels in the brain. Along with dopamine, which was discussed late earlier, Serotonin also plays a key role in our sleep quality. Our brain requires serotonin to produce melatonin, a hormone that is released in response to darkness and helps regulate our circadian rhythm. In conclusion, it is crucial to take appropriate medications and substances under the guidance of a doctor, as an inaccurate dosage can disrupt the balance and function of neurotransmitters, ultimately affecting people's daily lives. And here are my references for this lecture.